so for example here's your nervous system and so that's a nerve and that's the myelin sheath that goes around the outside and often in a case like parkinson's disease and m s and m d and fibromyalgia and lou gehrig's disease etc there is an attack of some sort on your nervous system and so the attack is coming from somewhere where is it coming from um you know it kind of looks like that it'll just come through there and it'll just chop those uh your, your nerves right off which stops the flow of uh of communication that goes through those nerves now and it, that could show up as uh as um as like vibrating tremors could show up as the, the loss of a limb of, of being able to use it uh, it shows up as in many many areas um but it's coming from the organ that goes right before that which is the spleen the spleen and your spleen tells your t-cells what to do and your t-cells are what attacks foreign cells that come into your body that's part of your immune system and you don't want them on your bad side so your spleen tells your t-cells what to do and if your spleen is all is totally full of toxicity and not functioning properly it starts giving your t-cells garbled messages and they can attack your joints like in ms and they can attack your nerves and many of these diseases and also, when your spleen is so full of toxicity, because it's the end, it's the tail end of your filter system, then toxicity starts slipping past the spleen as well, and that starts uh, raising a major havoc with your nervous system. And that also goes through there and severs that off and just stops the communication. So this is where the, the problem of the nervous system is. So can we take a pill from the nervous system and get it to work? Not really, not until we deal with the spleen. And the spleen didn't have a problem all by itself. It took something else feeding it before it got that way. And it's fed by your circulatory system. And it's also fed by your limb system, which it's the tail end of. So your limb system is there's as much fluid in that as your blood system. And your limb system is fed by your colon. And so our, our large intestine looks well, a little bit different than that, but there's a, there's a small intestine and a large intestine. And our nutrients are absorbed from our small intestine, especially up into our liver, like that. And it also comes from the large intestine. And the limb system starts filtering right here before it even gets to the liver. So it's from your portal vein. And so now this is, this is what your limb system is filtering. And so you're getting the toxicity through this way to the spleen, and you're also getting it from your liver. And, it's, and it, it, it's a combination of toxicity from what you eat, from what you absorb through your skin, and the toxicity that comes from your colon. And, and just so you know, which I'll talk about a little bit later, but there's 78 chemicals that come from the rotting mass that sits in your colon, and especially undigested protein. And so we're talking chemicals like alcohol and methane gas and formaldehyde. Those are produced right in your own colon. And for people who don't think this is real, um, if you ever seen the show Blazing Saddles where they're sitting around the fire, they're burning their gas. Like, that's a real thing. I've seen people burn their gas before. It burns a bright blue flame. And this is produced in your own, bo your own body, and it doesn't just go into the atmosphere. It's absorbed up into the body, and so it starts toxifying the body. And the, the, the poor... Uh, the digestion is, the worse it is. But the thing is, is that this is a problem, but why is it a problem? It's a problem because something else has a problem, and that is your stomach. Poor digestion with low digestive enzymes has a very difficult time breaking down your food, and the more undigested foods you have, especially your proteins, it comes through here and it just layers. It layers in your colon and just sits there and rots and ferments. So it all goes back to, to the digestive system. And why is the stomach weak? The stomach is weak because of your diet. So health is not that simple, but yet it's very predictable. It's very predictable. If you do certain things, it's going to fall apart. If you do certain things, it's going to be great. It's as simple as that.